six, they believe, brought to Australia initially. So how narrow would a gene pool be from six individuals out to 20, 30 million? Pretty amazing. Isn't it? What do you think, Bill? So I was thinking about foxes. Uh, they come here in very low numbers and yet their numbers have exploded. So they suspect that it was about six individuals initially. That's Saddle. been topped up a little bit over time. And the current estimate, I believe, is somewhere between 20 and 30 million foxes across Australia at the moment. So how lacking in genetic variants must they be? So in theory, if you knock the numbers right down to only six, they could possibly build up again. They could, but it would possibly depend on how much variance was in them before. Okay, the other thing is I was thinking, okay, fox, it's a predator, but it's no way yep. related to the marsupials. Not at all. The marsupials, except yep. that it's a mammal and that's it. Yeah, of course. So but possums, possums in New Zealand. Yeah. Boom. A boom. From probably what was a very small number yeah. gifted i believe in his infinite wisdom by a tasmanian governor okay yeah, so, so that's that's a classic example i hadn't really thought of that before but it does show that they can prosper even from a small base population yeah and kiwis hate us from now on <laughs> so so getting, ultimately yeah so there you have an example of a marsupial mm -hmm. that can do it. Yeah. So how do you think that relates to thylacine? Do you think Again, that I'm just sort of thinking, if, we, if the numbers were knocked right back, mm -hmm. uh, they go a sickness and the numbers dropped even more. But if there was just a little small handful of mm -hmm. individuals, could they sustain themselves? It's possible, but it would depend on the total number, I imagine. So... They think maybe 5,000 thylacines across the island historically. Mm-hmm. About the same as quolls. Yeah. Yep. So their critical mass of thylacine would therefore be maybe 500. Okay. So space-wise, no issue. There's, in my mind, there's more than enough area in Tasmania left to support 500 thylacines, such a low density that you would struggle to observe them. I've got no yeah. problem with that. And then... Yeah, of course, all my, my question has always been, is there's 500, surely we'd see them, but then we do get reports. Exactly. So we, if they are there, then yep. some of these reports are legit. And that's where the fox or the potential fox in Tasmania is a good comparison. I mean, they are struggling to prove categorically whether fox is here or not. Mm. But there's such a low population density of them. If they are here, you would struggle to see one. Where are you on the skeptometer of... Fox. foxes are here or not probably a lot higher than what i am with thylacine i sort of from the evidence the the dna that they have etc that they've published i'd be sort of seven eight yeah i would have been like nine yep but i'd sort of believe foxes are here although i've not seen one myself no uh they've got dead carcasses off the road and things like that but then yep. you got the whole conspiracy of you know people I not think, believing but i think you're always going to get that uh, yeah. With an elusive animal, you're probably always going to get that. They have shown in previous studies that fox can exist undetected for decades at 1 in 40 square kilometres. Okay. So Tasmania is 68,000 square kilometres. That's quite a big number potentially that could be here at any point that well, isn't observable. Well, here's another interesting thing. If foxes can remain unobservable in a very small space like that, mm -hmm. we've got much larger space in proportion oh. to the size of a thylacine absolutely and were they really seen that much when people first came here they didn't there know isn't. what to call it did they not really and from what i've read there doesn't seem to be a lot of sightings there's those classic examples where thylacines that were living that were observed ended up on the front page of a west coast newspaper and things like that it was obviously fairly rare that a so thylacine what era are we talking about here late 1800s late 1800s and then front page news if you saw a thylacine a then lie. no a lie 
alive here. Yep, so <coughs> at that point most of the thylacines were either dead on the end of trap lines or snare lines. Yeah. So it was unusual enough at the point where they were culling them to put a good observation of the live one on the front page. Okay, so this, this, I mean, what we're giving here, what we're talking about here are basic facts. Yep. And with these basic facts, it gives you that possibility that thylacines are out there. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we are skeptics, so we've not actually seen any proof for, uh, yep. you know, so many, yep. okay, any, what I mean is hardcore proof. Yep. A living specimen. A living specimen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no hardcore proof like that for decades, but... It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not out there. As I said, I don't struggle with the idea of space, but I struggle with the idea of genetic viability. Mm. With a few adaptations, it's not out of the question. Okay. Should continue the search. Let's do it. Let's do it. So you've spoken to Gandalf lately? Oh, of course. What about you in the wild, man? <laughs> Thank you.